Hello everyone and welcome to Catherine's Q&A. This is episode 35 and today I'm going to kind of walk you through the steps on a copyright at registration. So if you've written a book and you're interested in, you know, registering for copyright, uh, you may have some questions on what does that mean? What does it apply to you? If so, I actually have talked about that in a prior uh, episode, so that won't be actually discussed here. But what today is, what I'm going to actually do is literally the step-by-step -step process on logging into the platform, what you can expect they're going to ask, what kind of information you need to have ready. So your application process is pretty easy, swift, and re relatively painless. <laughs> so uh, when you have your book ready and you want to register, you go to www.copyright.gov. There are a variety of things you could register for copyright. Uh, you know, uh, if you go online, you'll see a lot of options available. Now, as an author, what I'm doing is registering a literary work, and that covers fiction, nonfiction, poetry, articles, and periodicals. If you are trying to copyright something else that may be a different application process, so this may not necessarily pertain to you as much as the others, I've only uh, registered books before so this is the steps that these are the steps I know now you will need to create an account so an ID and password etc so on that you can log into and on um, they'll keep all this information for anything you've submitted for copyright online on your platform so you can see that there now when you get on to the website again that's www.copyright.gov you select literary work again if you're an author and plug in your ID password, get to your personal account, and it'll be again by asking you for this new work you're trying to register, what is the title? So the title of the book that you are putting in, pretty basic stuff so far. It'll ask you publication um, completion, which means um, have, has this book been published yet? You can submit copyright for something that has been published um, within a few years of the publication. So that's why it's asking has this happened yet um, if so when was it and if it hasn't when is it expected to be released so you plug in that year of completion and answer that kind of question there the next thing it'll kind of move on along to is your author information so what is your author's name are you a U is the author a u.s citizen are you which would be you if you're applying for it and you fill that out there uh, is this were a work for hire and since when you are writing a book and trying to make a living off a book. That doesn't mean you're a work for hire. So even if you are using, you know, KDP or Amazon or Ingram Sparks, that's not necessarily work for hire. So for me, that's a no. Now you may have a different reasoning. And so this question may be a yes for you, just depending on what you're doing with your work. But for me, I always put no because I am not a work for hire I am so the point being is again there are a couple sections on here if you've never gone through it before please check the details because you may be different than what I do uh, for whatever reason now the next section that comes up is your author's contribution as an author it makes sense that I'm submitting a text now there are other options out there as well but again, for writing just a basic book, I don't do a picture book or anything like that. I don't, I'm not doing a book on photography. So I'm literally just doing text. And so that's what I will fill in right there. The next section is your claimant. And that's where you put your personal name and your information, like your address. Uh, so you'll be plugging this information there and you'll start realizing in a moment how repetitive this is gonna be. The next section is your limitations of a claim. And this pertains to, I guess I'll rewind for a second. Limitations of claim for me, I always leave blank because I don't have anything I'm trying to limit out. When I'm submitting a manuscript, I'm submitting the entire manuscript. This may be another section that you might need to look into uh, in case um, it applies differently. I've never worked with another author to create a joint piece of work. So if that's the case, this section might be different for you. But for me, just submitting one manuscript of one book that I've written, I put no, I don't need to limit anything, so I leave this section blank. Rights and permission is the next section. And again, we're gonna put in basic information, your name, your email, your 
um, if you have a business that you work under, so if you have your own personal LLC, um, you can plug in the LLC's official name and the address that's associated with the LLC right here. I have one, but and as an author, you don't need necessarily need one, so you might not have one and then you put in your personal information right here anyways. The next section that pops up is your correspondent. So who are they going to be dealing with? Um, who's the one that if there's any ever question, um, they can contact? And again, that's your name, your email, uh, your phone number, your personal address. See, we're kind of getting repetitive here. The section below that will be um, your mail certificate section where it's where do they mail the certificate when it's ready. Okay, so again, if you have an LLC or some kind of business, you would put that under your business address and the business name, et cetera, so on. If you don't have one, this is where you just put in your personal information. And this is again, the address they're gonna use to mail your, your certificate. Pretty self-explanatory. Below that will be special handling. I've never needed special handling, so I leave that blank. But if you're going through this the first time, I would recommend to kind of educate yourself about this section a little bit more because it may pertain to you differently. Um, certification section is below that. And it's pretty much, you're gonna check a little box and plug in your author's name one more time. Yay. And then after that, it'll take you down to where a section where you review everything you plugged in before. You really do want to just give it a good eyeball and make sure your name is spelled correctly, your addresses are correct, especially if you're using different ones for different sections. Um, just make sure everything is correct because this is what legally is going to be kept in, on the system and file. Uh, after that, it'll bounce you when you're trying to check out, it'll bounce you out to a different website essentially where you're going to go through and pay for this application process. And for me, the last time that happened, it was around $65. That may change, but uh, it kind of gives you an idea of how much this costs. And once you pay, it'll pull you back to the copyright.gov website, and there will pop up a section where you can finally upload your manuscript for those who are doing this the first time, note that when you're uploading manuscript, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. You can continue to edit beyond uh, what you submit to this platform. What it does mean is if you are going to do major rewrites to the point where <laughs> your storyline might be unrecognizable, uh, that's in the, the eyes of the people who run this. Um, considered a separate manuscript at that point. So if you want to be very cautious, you might need to copy or do a second one uh, down the line for that. But for me, when I go through edits, I, my storyline doesn't really change that much. I might tweak a little thing here or there, grammar. Um, I might do edits on grammar and spelling and punctuation, et cetera, so on. Formatting can change, obviously, because I'll be formatting my book at a later date. But I submit it uh, before I have any beta readers or ARC readers or editors go through it. It's just a way, again, to cover my bases if there ever comes a question of who wrote what first and um, if there's any issues where people are accusing, you know, an author on cop uh, infringement of copyright, which means um, someone stealing someone else's idea. So I submit mine as early as possible with the note that I'm not going to do any major changes. Okay. But just giving that quick little refresh right there of what kind of, where in the stage you submit for copyright. It just depends on you. Some people wait till after they publish. I would recommend doing it a little earlier, but just be, be warned. <laughs> okay, and once you upload the file, and again, just look over everything one final time, you hit click submit and you are done. And you can expect in the next couple months, I think it's like two, months, maybe six, yeah, let's see, two months, six weeks, maybe a little longer, uh, you can expect that copyright certificate in the mail where you keep in a safe space and keep on record. But that's really what my spiel was today. I know that's a very thrilling topic to talk about, but it just gives you an idea of what to expect ex um, when you're going through the process if you've never done it before. If you have any questions about this or anything else, you can post them in the comments below or message me on my social media. And until next time, Skull.